Hey Buckets must be Friday, come on in. Hey Buckets, come on over, let's make pot. Hey Bucket, so you know I just love making pot. I enjoy when I'm in this kitchen, it puts me in a little zone, you know? Right now we're putting egg wash on the pot. Egg wash goes on the pie, it helps the pie, gives it a nice golden color and bake nice and well. After the egg wash, take a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of seasoning on the pie. Gives it a nice golden brown color as well. I'm going to take and put it straight in the oven. All right. The bucket, hot the oven it comes. Ooh, that looks good. Look at there. Put this nice hot pie here in this container for you. Ooh, there we go. Again, yeah. hey Bucket. Happy Pie Day, Bucket. And happy birthday to you. All right, Bucket. See you next year. Welcome to AWS Pi Day 2023. I'm Kevin Miller, the Vice President and General Manager of Amazon S3. Now, before we get started, I feel like something's missing. Um, oh, where where is Buckets? I, where's where is Buckets? Oh, there you are. Well, thank you. Thanks for bringing the pie. It's great to get that to get this this all kicked off. Thanks, Buckets. Well, now we can really officially get started. Thanks for joining us today as we celebrate 17 years of innovation with Amazon S3. As Swami mentioned this morning during AWS Innovate, S3 was the first generally available AWS service, and we celebrate the launch anniversary every year on March 14th, better known as Pi Day. Today we have 11 different sessions for you that provide an update on all the latest innovations from across AWS data services, including our file and object storage, uh, analytics, and AI services. We also talk about how to make your data more connected, accessible, secure, and available, and also how to optimize cost savings, which, as we all know, is top of mind for many right now. I'm also excited to share a number of launch announcements that, that we've been cooking up. They're fresh off the baking sheets today, and we're just going to have a lot of fun throughout the day. So with all that, let's just dig right in. If you rewind the clock to 2006, Amazon S3 launched as a simple way to store data. It was elastic, fully managed, and low cost. And after 17 years and dozens of new features, S3 still remains true to those roots. It's actually really amazing how fast the time has flown by. 
This is only a fraction of the new features that S3 has added over the years. The innovation is driven in large part by your feedback. So whether it's features like S3 event notification, enabling serverless event-driven applications, or S3 intelligent tiering, which was first of its kind storage class that delivers automatic storage cost savings when your data access patterns change without performance impact or operational overhead. This year in particular, a lot of customers are looking for ways to cost optimize and really just make every penny count. S3 offers a range of features and storage classes, including lifecycle policies, automatic data tiering, and observability and management capabilities that really help customers optimize their costs and gain operational advantages. So for example, many customers need storage for storing photo or video archives, and they can use Amazon S3 Glacier Instant Retrieval that we launched about 17 months ago. With Glacier Instant Retrieval, you get the lowest cost storage for long-lived data that's rarely accessed and requires retrieval in just milliseconds. Of course, this innovation continues, and stay tuned because we are going to be adding a number of items to the launch list in the next few minutes. Now, speaking of S3 Glacier innovations, I often get asked by customers about how they can effectively manage cold data and put it to work to unlock new opportunities. Ancestry has been a longtime customer of AWS. They were founded actually in 1983, and they operate a large network of genealogical historical records and related genetic genealogy websites. They actually have over 30 billion records in their online database and more than 3.5 million users. Ancestry is doing some really innovative machine learning for handwriting recognition, training those algorithms on thousands of pages of handwritten historical documents. These documents, which actually are hundreds of terabytes in size, were stored in S3 Glacier. Now, Ancestry was able to restore hundreds of terabytes of these images from Glacier within just hours instead of days to then train those uh, ML models. Being able to restore all this data so quickly, they're able to train against massive data sets in a very cost-effective way, letting their customers connect with ancestors and learn more about their own family histories. It's really inspiring. Another customer that's unlocking new innovations is Upstocks. They are a leading Indian discount broker, providing financial education and a digital platform for making investments to more than 11 million customers. They've grown a lot since 2020, and they really needed to optimize their unit costs and make Amazon S3's data storage usage more efficient. So they turned to S3 Storage Lens, which is a feature we launched in 2020 to get organization-wide visibility into their storage usage. They made it a key part of daily operations, and they actually continue to use Storage Lens to observe, analyze, and then optimize that storage footprint. Doing so, they've actually saved their uh, reduced their storage costs by over 96%, which is more than a million dollars annually. It's just an amazing savings. And they've really let Upstocks invest in accelerating that digital transformation that they're going through. It's really awesome to see, and actually a story that I hear over and over from customers, that they optimize their costs, leading directly to unlocking new opportunities for their business. Now, I want to shift for a moment to talk about S3 fundamentals. There are areas that you might not ever see, except that it just works. S3's unique architecture gives customer an industry-leading combination of durability, security, availability, and performance at virtually unlimited scale. And we are constantly optimizing costs to be able to pass along these savings to customers. Now, anyone who's ever operated their own storage at scale knows that delivering on all these fundamentals all at once is actually really hard. It takes a lot of effort and experience to get it right. We focus daily on raising the bar on fundamentals, and this is freeing up your time to focus on innovation instead of having to figure out how to durably store and retain your data. At the end of the day, it's been S3's execution on these fundamentals over all 17 years that has really earned uh, the trust of millions of customers from all sizes and all industries. Today, AWS has the largest global infrastructure footprint of any provider, and we are continuously increasing this. Over the last year alone, we've had the fastest rate of expansion in our history with five new regions launched and two new regions that have been announced. Just two weeks ago, we announced our plan to launch a region in Malaysia, for example. Customers can use S3 in any of these 31 worldwide regions, and we expand to new regions for a few reasons. In some cases, like Malaysia, customers have workloads that they need to run within their own national boundaries. In other cases, such as with our recent launch of a new region in Melbourne, Australia, our second region in Australia is critical, particularly for highly regulated customers, including those in healthcare, financial services, and government. Using this global infrastructure, customers have tremendous choice in the availability they can obtain. Most commonly, customers run in a single region where they benefit from a 99.9% .9 availability SLA for S3 standard and many AWS services. 
Customers that are designing for even higher availability can then also use services across multiple regions. In doing so, it's important to understand that each instance of S3 in a region is a standalone and isolated installation of S3. This concept of isolation is a very important design tenant for us that we take really seriously. To simplify the work building applications across multiple regions, in 2021, we launched S3 multi-region access points. Now these provide a single global endpoint for your multi-region applications, and they dynamically route S3 requests based on policies that you define. So this helps you to easily implement multi-region resilience, latency-based routing, and automatic or customer-controlled failover. But one thing we hear consistently from customers is that they wanted the ability to run multi-region access points in different AWS accounts across the regions. And so I am very pleased to announce that we can, you can now, can now do this, customers can do this. In addition to meeting geographical requirements, customers can now use S3 replication to replicate data to a bucket in a different AWS account that this provides additional protection against accidental or unauthorized data deletion. And starting today with S3 multi-region access points, you can now have these data sets replicated across multiple accounts, just simplifying the storage access for these applications that span both AWS regions and accounts. And it just avoids the need for you to build complex request routing logic in your application. Now, earlier I noted that many customers use S3 in a single region, and let me briefly explain why. Within a region, like in the Melbourne region, S3 operates across multiple availability zones, typically three or more, and these are physically separate. Our AZs are connected with low latency, high throughput, and redundant networking, and they're actually separated by miles to protect against local events like fires, floods, or other power interruption type events. When you place an object into S3, we take your data and we store it in multiple AZs. In each AZ, it's redundantly stored across multiple devices. And we do this to distribute your data in the AWS region before we even return a success response back to your application. And all of this, of course, happens in just a matter of milliseconds. Storing your data redundantly across multiple data centers and multiple devices within those data centers is the first step in making your data highly durable. But to get to the 11 nines of durability, we incorporate durability safeguards into everything we do. Every time our software handles bits, every new feature we add to the system, and every time we bring new capacity into the fleet, we are constantly checksumming the data and the operations to ensure correct processing. Internally, S3 actually uses checksums throughout our entire system to verify data. And we recently did the math, and we do an amazing 4 billion checksum operations every second to verify that data stays durable while we have it in our care. Another benefit of S3's unique architecture is the ability to scale. And you benefit from this scale in so many ways. The size of our system in any given region allows you to massively parallelize your application to the point of achieving virtually unlimited throughput between your applications and S3. This means you can scale up and scale down and do so without ever having to pre-provision storage like you would in a traditional data center. In addition to the cost savings you get from not having to pre-provision storage and therefore only paying for what you use, we also deliver lower costs based on economies of scale. And one of my favorite facts about S3 is just how it automatically saves customers money. About four years ago, we launched Amazon S3 Intelligent Tiering, which delivers automatic storage cost savings for changing data access patterns. Now, less than 18 months ago, I shared how S3 Intelligent Tiering has already saved customers, at, this is 18 months ago, $250 million. And then last year, I shared a number of $750 million of savings using S3 Intelligent Tiering. But I am very happy to announce that since the launch of S3 Intelligent Tiering in November 2018, just over four years ago, customers have now saved more than a billion dollars. That's a billion with a B, and those savings just keep accumulating. The scale of S3 is immense. We store more than 280 trillion objects, and we peak at processing over 100 million requests per second. And of course, with a fully managed data store like S3, it's our job to continuously scale the service on behalf of customers. So whether you need a few billion objects or a million requests per second, that's our job to deliver that for you. And that's one of the reasons that customers uh, like Snap use S3 in leveraging our massive scale. Snap actually takes advantage of S3's high performance and scale, storing over two exabytes of data, which is a, the equivalent of about 1.5 trillion media files on S3. They have more than 300 million daily active users that share and save photos and videos, and of course, their user base just continues to increase. 
And over the past years, Snap has really been unlocking new opportunities with data by adding all the ability to store media and memories long term. And that's really increased their storage needs pretty quickly. And they, of course, needed to do that without diminishing performance or compromising the user experience, and of course, at a low cost. So to do that and optimize the, the cost, Snap adopted Amazon S3 Glacier Instant Retrieval, again, designed to deliver low cost storage for long lived data that's rarely accessed. By using Glacier Instant Retrieval for that long-term media files, Snap is saving tens of millions of dollars while having the same performance and powering new business opportunities like new features in their app. To unlock all these opportunities with data, you must be confident in the security of your environment. And of course, at AWS, security has long been our most important priority, and it always will be. We think of data security as compromising, uh, comprising rather, at least four major aspects. Protecting the integrity of data first, which we do through features like S3 object lock to prevent deletion until a specified date, or checksums, replication, and versioning. Data also must be kept private, including encryption in transit and at rest, with things like key management through the AWS Key Management Service that's built on hardware that meets some of the most stringent government security standards, as well as protecting your data perimeter with services like AWS Private Link. It means controlling access to your data, which customers do with AWS Identity and Access Management, Object Ownership, and S3 Block Public Access, which, minima, uh, which is a single control to control access to public, uh, public access to objects. And then finally, governance over your data, knowing what you have and who's accessing it. Customers of S3 have extensive governance capabilities that includes AWS CloudTrail to audit all data access, Macy to classify sensitive information, S3 inventory reports, and S3 storage lens to have visibility into your S3 usage, as well as AWS Trusted Advisor to flag best practice recommendations. Over the past few years, we've introduced a few security features that have quickly become new best practices for S3 security. Sometimes customers set bucket policies that allow public access, and the S3 Bot Public Access Control is a simple setting that overrides these policies and permissions so that you can limit public access to your objects. And we announced this past January that we are now establishing a new minimum default level of encryption across all of S3. And we completed that rollout just in the last few weeks. And so we're now happy to announce that every new object created in S3 is automatically encrypted at rest. We launched Block Public Access back in 2018. And last year, we launched the ability to disable ACLs. ACLs were actually the first access control system that S3 used before IAM was even invented. These days, customers really prefer using IAM for access control, and disabling ACLs simplifies your S3 configuration because you can just rely on the IAM control and don't have to worry about this second permissioning system. We're now making both of these settings the defaults for all new buckets starting next month in April. So we will change the defaults for our Create Bucket API so that block public access is turned on and ACLs are turned off for every new bucket that you create. But that's not all we're doing. We've got another great simplification to share with you. Many of our customers use AWS Private Link to maintain a strong data perimeter that encompasses both their cloud VPC infrastructure and on-premise data centers or offices. Now, historically, it's been a little bit complicated to use the lowest cost Private Link endpoint for both the cloud and non-cloud clients. With today's launch of simplified private connectivity to on-premises networks, we're now making this as simple as checking a box. So we're now making it easy to use gateway-style private link endpoints for instances connecting to S3 from the cloud and interface-style private link endpoints for your on-premises clients. All you have to do is check the box, and then if you use Route 53 Resolver, we just take care of doing the right thing and directing the traffic to the right endpoint. Bringing this all together, all the investment that S3 makes in availability, capacity, cost, security, durability, and performance means that customers can spend more time focused on business innovation, the part that only they can do. These days, I hear from almost every customer that they are going through something of a transformation, especially around how they use data. Increasingly, data sets are being collected, analyzed, correlated, and used to make day-to-day -day business decisions. In fact, many of our customers are building workflows and systems that do all of this in near real time that take humans out of the loop altogether. And this is a key way that these customers are unlocking opportunities with data. Take Torque Robotics as an example. They were originally founded in 2005, and since then, they've been focused on building an autonomous trucking solution. 
Doing this requires Torque to process and analyze mammoth amounts of data. And originally all of this data was on premises. And they had, therefore had an expensive system that was in one location, such that if they sent a vehicle to somewhere else to drive around, they had to ship the data back, physically moving data and loading it into their on-premises system. It was error prone, manual processes, and they knew that in order to fulfill their mission, they needed to get a lot more scale. So they moved that data into AWS. And one of the managers of the data engineering team at Torque told us that their primary goal was to get everything into S3 and get a data lake stood up as quickly as possible. And Zane, the manager, continues to be impressed with just how simple, reliable, and performant S3 is. It's really a central component in the data lake that his team has built at Torque and a foundation for all their operations that they built on top of it. And that allows them to move faster and focus on the true differentiated work. It's a really exciting time to invent new ways to use your data to create new opportunities. Today is just the beginning. The potential for data to reinvent businesses at this point seems limitless, and we are here to help and deliver features to make that possible. I'd like to take you through a few new innovations from AWS that you can actually take advantage of to help unlock the value of your data. A few years ago, we launched S3 Object Lambda, actually, at Pi Day. With S3 Object Lambda, you can add your own code to get, list, and head requests in S3 to modify and process data as it's returned to an application. And so for the first time, you could really use custom code to change the data returned by a standard S3 get request. So whether you are filtering rows, resizing images, redacting confidential information, you can do all of that and more. It's all powered by AWS Lambda functions. And so your code runs on infrastructure fully managed by AWS, both the data and the compute, which eliminates the need to create and store derivative copies of that data or to run expensive proxies. Now, today, we are introducing new support for S3 Object Lambda with CloudFront. And this addresses one of the most popular use cases we've, we've heard about from a lot of customers, particularly those that have image sharing applications or other applications where they want to use Object Lambda to transform images or data on the fly with Amazon CloudFront caching that data at the edge. And as of today, I'm pleased to say you can do that. We now have new integrations so you can deliver customized content to your end users, depending on all the various characteristics, such as you know, what device they're accessing the content from or the country that they might be uh, visiting from. The origin requests are transformed by Object Lambda, and then the results of that transformation are cached in CloudFront. We were recently talking with PixieSet about this new feature, and they're really excited to start using it. They are an all-in-one platform for modern photographers that offer photo client galleries and websites and other studio management software tools. They are one of the fastest growing companies in the photography industry right now. And to today, they have hundreds of thousands of photographers around the world that use PixieSet to make their business simpler and more professional and just more streamlined. With S3 Object Lambda's integration with CloudFront, PixieSet now plans to apply these transformations and do watermarking on the fly as images are accessed via CloudFront, which just further simplifies what they're doing. Now, one trend that we're seeing a lot is customers building massive shared data lakes. And as this happens, the ways in which the data is accessed and shared are evolving. Traditionally, we've seen that data sets are provisioned sort of individually in silos that are used by individual applications. But today, with so many more applications that are hungry for data and so much more data being collected to power those applications, it's no longer practical to be moving data around between silos. Instead, customers are adopting what I term a data as a service model, where data sets are created once and then shared many times over to whatever applications need that data. And there's just a rising importance of both unstructured and semi-structured data for machine learning and data lakes, not just the structured data that you've traditionally found in a database. Data is just growing in volume and diversity of data. And with it growing so fast that many companies can't really keep track of it, you know, collecting and getting value out of that data is a challenging thing to do. According to Accenture's data value gap report, actually 68% of companies aren't able to realize the measurable value from their data, and only 28% have a strategy in place to take advantage of all the data analytics tools and infrastructure throughout their, their business. Harnessing data to reinvent your business is challenging, but imperative to stay relevant now and into the future. And that's why we see a lot of customers building modern data lakes in S3. The customers that are able to put their data to work to make those better, more informed decisions can respond faster to the unexpected and, and we believe will thrive going forward. Earlier, we talked about harnessing data to reinvent your business. 
Organizations are producing more and more data sets than ever before within different lines of business to make these faster decisions. But finding the data that you need and using it is just labor intensive and very difficult to do. And providing data is just as hard for organizations that are distributing data to their customers and also for data providers who are finding customers. Uh, and it, it's just a cumbersome process to share those data sets. And these barriers really prevent organizations that have valuable data from making it available to third parties. Now, a few years ago, we launched the AWS Data Exchange, part of AWS Marketplace, to really simplify the process of sharing and using data. Data Exchange helps companies find the data that they're looking for with a curated catalog that now includes over 3,500 public products from over 300 data providers. And we support both custom and private products for situations where customers also want data that's not necessarily in the public catalog. There are over 2,000 free public data sets that you can use right now. And we support data delivery via files, tables, and APIs, so you can start using the data that you want in production as soon as you license it without spending months having to build a data ingestion pipeline to get there. And I'm really excited today to announce the general availability of AWS Data Exchange for Amazon S3. This feature allows customers to find, subscribe to, and use third-party data directly from the data provider's S3 buckets. Of course, S3 is used by millions of customers around the world, and a lot of technology already works with S3, so now we're happy to add Data Exchange to the list. And we already have a lot of organizations using Data Exchange for S3 as a key part of their data pipeline. You know, the data sets are far and wide, and they can be used for just the cost of S3 API access. So whether you're looking for demographic attributes by geography, stock closing prices, COVID-19 testing data, wildfire risk assessments, automotive supply chain, or real-time restaurant menu and grocery inventory, all of those are examples you can find right now on AWS Marketplace. Honestly, I was just browsing the data catalog, and I came up with a number of new ideas for new applications. So with this launch, we're now unlocking use cases for subscribers to be able to use petabytes of data without having to move a single byte anywhere. And you can directly access the S3 objects uh, without having to create copies. For data providers, you're now able to license direct access to data that you host in an S3 bucket in just a few steps. And with all of this, you can deliver faster time to insight because you can just start your analysis in AWS using the provider data. And then for data providers, you minimize having to make copies to deliver third-party data, which just simplifies the, the overall process for both subscribers and providers. Another one of the trends that I'm seeing is customers that are using a lot of open source to access data in S3. There's actually a lot of innovation happening here, and we're really proud to be part of the community and making sure our customers can take advantage of all the latest S3 features in their applications with the least amount of effort. This year alone, we've made, uh, actually last year, we made 48 contributions to S3A, which is one of the most common connectors for S3 used in Apache Hadoop workloads. We've also made seven contributions to improve performance for customers that use Trino, which is an open source SQL query engine that can be used to do interactive analytics on data stored in S3. Now, for a long time, we've heard from customers that build application using Linux file APIs. It's like the basic open, close, read APIs. Sometimes it's software that they can't easily change that expects that file interface, while other times customers build quick experiments using local files that is actually really successful, and then suddenly they need to scale it up to run on thousands of cores and petabytes of data. Either way, customers have asked us for a way to have the quality, high performance, uh, and access to S3 using local file APIs. And so I'm very pleased to share that Mount Point for Amazon S3 is now available as an alpha release. Mount Point is a Linux Fuse-based file client, and in this first release, clients will be able to read data from S3. We've got a lot more functionality planned, and we're gonna be maturing Mount Point for S3 in the coming weeks and months. It's an open source package with a published roadmap that you can see, and we actually really look forward to receiving your feedback and code suggestions as we evolve it. I really can't wait to see what you do with all of these new features. Now, if you're looking to further build your knowledge on AWS storage services, I really encourage you to check out the AWS training and certification resources available to you. You can create a free account at AWS Skill Builder to access storage learning plans. These will pull together training content for a particular solution and organize all of these assets from foundational all the way up to advanced. You can use learning plans as a starting point to discover training that matters to you, and then ramp up guides to get the links to different assets like white papers and blogs to further build your skills. 
And then finally, you can take an assessment at the end of a learning path to see how much knowledge you've gained. And if you pass the assessment, you get a great digital badge so you can show what you know. All right, so as you may know, it's been a long-standing Amazon S3 tradition on Pi Day that we always eat some good pie, and we encourage you to do the same today. For the second year, we're partnering with Baked from the Heart as our official pie supplier. I want to have a big thanks to Bill Hart, the owner, for his help keeping us all fueled for the next wave of innovation. I also want to highlight one of the organizations that Amazon partners with, which is Ignite Worldwide. This is a nonprofit organization working to achieve gender and racial equity in the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. I really encourage all of you to check out Ignite's website and get involved. All right, so thank you for joining us for AWS Pi Day 2023. It's already shaping up to be a great day. In case you missed the AWS Innovate event earlier today, be sure to register and catch up with all the on-demand sessions after today to dive deeper into artificial intelligence, machine learnings, and all things data. So thank you for your time. I hope you get a lot of value out of today's session.